scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. First, 2023, thank you for Reverend Kula and his amazing team. Thank you for all the servants of God who have ministered before now. Lord, we pray that you speak to us yet again. Grant us illumination, grant us understanding, and we decree and declare that we will leave this place transpiscated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, we had a brief talk with Reverend at the Rotunda, and I was just really appreciating him for the determination and the faith to put up such, in my opinion, a national program. This is profound, not only because it is happening in Kenya, but that this program has been able to break the walls of denominationalism to allow people across several denominations to come together to convert. Truly appreciating him and praying that this serves as a model for many other African nations. Hallelujah. That we are truly stronger when we are together. Hallelujah. And it is my prayer that the Lord will bless us. Uh, there's a lot to share, but wherever we stop for now, we we'll pray and then rest for the evening. If you're in agreement, shout a loud amen. amen. And I hope you can hear me right to the back. If you can hear me, please shout a loud amen. amen. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll start with three scriptures. Um, Daniel 11 and verse 32. Daniel 11, 32, the B part. The Bible says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. It says, But the people that do know their God, it shall be strong and number two they shall do exploits not talk exploits not wish exploits they shall do exploits so the bible says that the people that comes with knowing god genuinely one of it is strength capacity the other is the fortitude to do exploits. Scripture number two, lifted up his eyes to the heavens and then he began his prayer. By the time we get to verse three, this is what Jesus is saying. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus who is life eternal. That eternal life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Sure, by Apostle Paul, this was that was in the heart of a man who had done so well that I may know him and the power of him. You think at this point in Paul's life, I hope you started with an encounter. An encounter was started by and with and through an He says, my greatest, the few points as we begin this session, there is a way that with the knowledge of God is a predefined way that in pursuit, know God, but it will come now. 
Yes. He walks in keeping with that pathway, victorious Christian life. We live in a world that is full of people who purport to know God. You know, faith follows a man that the Bible says knows God indeed. That means if you claim that you know the God of the Bible, you do not measure. You would also have certain evidences to present to the world as tokens. Are we together? Evidences that you truly met the God of the Bible. So it is important for us to know him. And this is very important because his way of knowing him is not the only way to know him. Listen, not a way. There are many routes to the pursuit of God. Occultism is a route that can help you explore the realm of the spirit. And in so doing, you will not mean you will encounter the God of the Bible. There are many other spirits that can, ask, that can assist men to ask. The reason why zeal must be guided, it can lead a man into an experience in the realm of the spirit where driven by his zeal, and through fasting, prayer, consecration, you will dedicate yourself sometimes in a blind pursuit of spirituality. And at the end of that experience, you will come up with many, many supernatural experiences that are not a revelation of God. And you have the impact that that experience of, we will find you wanting because men and women have realm of the spirit using different routes and different vehicles. What you find, there will be a finding to honor your pursuit. So many people have contacted familiar spirits. Many people have contacted um, extra capture of error. It's very delicate that we all understand shortly. That means if you liberty of creativity in the pursuit of God, Creativity is only important when you are manifesting your goodness, not your creativity. Are we together now? So there is a predefined pathway to the knowledge of God. This is the first point. It will only have been successful if it has seen us and the unbelieving world be saved. Then the next apostolic conference that seeks to obdebor us in the vineyard as was so blessed by the dedication, the project that just happened, there has to be an aspect of this conference that ministers to society. I will never advocate a Christian practice that has no point of application as far as territorial transformation is concerned. Because the Great Commission, as we know, has a threefold number three to transform territories. If any of this piece is taken out of the way, it no longer becomes the Great Commission. And for a long time, our advocacy has just been planting Christ in the hearts of men through evangelism. And that is very important. But it is the reason why we have sincere people in an environment that is full of decline and decadence. An example of such state was found in the life of a man in the Bible called Lot. Lot was a righteous man. But Sodom and Gomorrah was not free, is also saved. Not just your heart. A man who loved the Lord, but the lives of his daughters were about to be ruined. Literally because he was immersed in a territory that did not honor God. Hallelujah. So we, this is the apostolic dimension to the Christian faith that God is reintroducing, especially to the nation of Africa. For a very long time, I don't want to go ahead of myself, but you that the church in Africa, which has translated to the state of the African nation, um, that state is a symptom of two things, two deficiencies. Number one, the bankruptcy of the knowledge of the true God alongside his ways. That the current state of the church, in as much as there are many wonderful commendable things like the revival that Africa is spearheading right now by grace across the territories. There are many great things that God is doing in and through Africa. However, the deficiency in growth and start, the bankruptcy of the knowledge of the true, the state of the church of spiritual voices we have across the territory. Hallelujah. 
if for any reason we have spiritual voices that are in balance, those shades of lopsidedness that we have suffered in the church. For instance, rejecting prosperity. For instance, becoming materialistic. These are all side effects. Are we seeing that now? There is a way that the gospel and the kingdom life must be an individual of stature in of what John called the lamb's wife that was equal in length, a city that was equal in breadth, a city that was equal in height. That is the lamb's wife, nature of the lamb's wife. So I believe that using conferences like this, God is helping us to in love conquer a true believer should look at evangelist pastor that state of maturity will the measure of christ he says not they lie to deceive if we're to get back to my discussion that there ends the boundary of god's dealings with men of the dealings of they were not canonized to become part of the 66 books that we know they were a revelation of the annals of the king the dead sea scrolls and all of this matter. but the bible says that what is written in the believer to maturity and stature spirit will be sufficient in john chapter 20 when you read from verse 30 the bible says many other miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples one says but thee have life eternal that means it is safe for a believer generally speaking partnership with the holy spirit is sufficient to build up that theological background so we must guide our pursuit and the basis for our references there are people who have consulted a lot of materials that have now according to scripture please you may want to write this there are four biblical channels to the knowledge of god that there are four biblical pathways to the knowledge of god as revealed in scripture let me run through these very methodologies of god second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16 second timothy 3 15 and 16 this is no controversy by the time we start the bible says and that from a child christ jesus let's look at the next verse then it says all scripture how many scripture all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine reproof correction and instruction in righteousness to what end verse 17 is number one for any believer who seeks to explore the knowledge of god the first recommendation is that you consult scripture this is very important number two we're just running the second platform to knowing god as the bible reveals is to study his names the names of god are scattered from genesis to revelation are a capture of the various dimensions of god that he revealed to men so when you say jaira when you say sikenu when you say rafa when you say the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob all teach their children the meaning of such names because god is great but in revealing himself to man he reveals himself dimensionally are we together now and every dimension that is seen and known to man is not the same thing as what sikenu god of isaac will operate with you even though it's the same god walking are we together now so we learn god by studying captured in that name when you call the scope of his revelation as captured in that name are we together that the second way we know god is by a meticulous study of his name moses meets him in the wilderness and says what should i tell pharaoh who had sent me and he says go and tell pharaoh i am has sent you i am that i am and when you read Exodus chapter 6, I believe, Exodus chapter 6, give us verse 1 to 3. For with a strong hand shall he not speak unto Moses and said, And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known unto them. This is God speaking. That there was a dimension on me. We can learn God as we study his name. Listen, do you know that your entire journey as a Christian 
should give God himself after men a capture of a way he operated through the lifetime of a man that no generation should join the cloud of witnesses without leaving a name that the younger generations must learn how did he come through for you this way and you tell them the way that we learn God as revealed from scripture third way believers are masters say Jesus one more time shout that name let the devil hear you Jesus. Jesus the Bible says God who in sundry times and diverse manners Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1 speak to us in time past through the prophets he said had in this last day by the study of the person Jesus Colossians 1 and verse 15 Colossians it together we're reading 15 we're reading 16. are you patient enough to read with me all right let's go one two go who is the image of the invisible god him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or his gospel his synoptic account of jesus by giving us a very brilliant presentation all other synoptic accounts began their discourse either from a historic standpoint giving us genealogies or like mark straight into the acts of jesus but john took out time to trace his discourse from the divinity of jesus he starts by saying john 1 and verse 1 he says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was with God in the beginning. Now, I like verse 3. It says, all things were, that means outside of his participation was not anything missed by the revelation of Jesus. For there is a role that experience of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. The Bible says, O oh, taste and see, not just obedience can help men know God. This is where the advantage of fatherhood and the advantage of buying through the experience of elders works out for believers. Are we together? That an elder can see, even though Eli, watch this, Eli was in a state, a backslide, his sense of vision. If you permitted his sons to live in such lawlessness, piling up wrath upon himself and his sons. However, when Samuel heard the voice of God, he did not assume. He went to Eli and Eli told him, no, I'm not the one calling you. God had to connect Samuel with Eli to understand him and understand the purposes of God for his life. And then Eli used the lens of experience again. Say, speak. Even in that fallen state, he was the one who to become the mighty prophet. Experience. I can tell you, if you have been saved and you are working with God properly for 10, 20 years, God, that pain can teach. Something about God that mistakes can teach. You know, from the lens of your confusion, your pain, your search, you can help correct a generation from the lens of your experience. Now, I tell you, you are going, can appear as an angel of light. It's liberty and that we do not go incarnate and then number four guided our jesus the already who is this jesus really and why did he come i think i should start with why he came who is jesus but then why did he come the bible did you know that from genesis up until the time jesus showed up in many every time you would see prophets interchange between their many of them even as they acted according to Paul's teaching and until Jesus showed up but he had to depend on what their leaders told them God was prophet or the leader was speaking accurately they had to write that down a threefold assignment when he walked upon the earth he came to fulfill a threefold assignment I would just give it to us very very quickly this was the first assignment of Jesus his first assignment was not your assignment, but not the first. If it was his main time to be seen, captured, and recorded, was because he came for more than just dying.
to reconcile men. Please understand this. The first mandate, the first assignment of Jesus was that you read, I believe that was Acts chapter 17. There was a city in scripture. I think that should be verse 20, I hope. He shone. They were passionate people to an unknown God. Books about an unknown God. Even dying for an unknown God. And Paul came to bring perspective to their zeal without understanding. And he told them, I see that you are a zealous. Jesus came as a reference. God had to accredit Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son. And then in a he he's an authorized channel to knowing me. Are we learning now? The first assignment of Jesus as he walked upon the earth, ladies and gentlemen, is to help us know God and to correct, to use what us God was. So, if the prophet said God is love, we have a right to doubt it until we verify it using the person Jesus. Did we see love captured in his experience? For instance, the prophets will say things like an evil spirit came from the Lord. Now, that was us. We have a right to mark that script because we do not see any evil coming out of Jesus. The Bible tells us that he was full of grace and did their understanding using the marking script, Jesus. Are we learning now? Yes. It's not a call to be critical. Appreciate the fact that we've been now given the advantage of marvelous light and we can see clearer and we can see their mistakes. There were many things that they attributed to God that now using the lens of Jesus, we see that it was not God at all. It's an uncomfortable truth because it's in the Bible and you'll be afraid to confess. When the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, we have a right to not be. But was he angry? Yes. Proof, he flogged people at the temple. And he flogged them and they made reference to him. shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have turned it to a den of either a house of prayer or a den of robbers. And I can tell you who that robber is. The robber is the thief. I'm not talking of the building. I'm talking of you, that house of God. If you are not a house of prayer, then you qualify to be a den. Hitherto, many people believe that God could not him. To show that God can reveal himself to anyone, regard forbid them for, for such. That means they are coming to me is a lesson that you must become childlike to know me, not childish. Let the little children come to me. The second reason why Jesus came was to reconcile all and only begotten son. We know from the intelligence of scripture that... He's no longer his one son. He says that whosoever believeth on him should tend. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, to Jesus came was to reconcile men to God. And that would not happen by a... It would require his life. Are we together? It is the reason why until Jesus died, I finished a series with the greatest need of man. The miracle of administering eternal life. That could not happen until... After the cross, the structure of eternal life demanded that he would have to die and that his blood would be shed. That he used his blood to purchase, sounds sarcastic, but you will be surprised how many people run churches in Africa and cannot articulate with intelligence why Jesus came. Uncertainty why Jesus came. The third reason why Jesus came, which is very important to be considering it, I hope, in the sub Jesus came as a pattern man to reveal man. Romans chapter 3, now 23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen glory. And Jesus came to reveal to us God's expectation. When he walked upon the earth, he did all that he did visibly and to the seeing of all who have fallen short of God's expectation. He says, And greater works than this shall you do. If I lay hands on someone on a wheelchair and the person arises, you are not surprised as a believer because Jesus gave us that template. That is a possibility that should be captured in the life of a believer. Are we together? If Reverend Julian builds a city literally and builds many cities, these are possibilities. 
We are not in doubt because Jesus already told us that it, these things should be captured in the frame of your Christian experience. So, in or doubting, because he already told Abraham, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This experience should not be foreign to a believer. Are we together now? Prosperity and finance by this time tomorrow is a possibility. That means don't doubt that after this conference, when God gives a man a prophetic leverage over his finances, it does not make sense economically. But when a believer examines this, it's still an agreeable dimension because it is captured five loaf and two fish fed 5,000 people immediately. Now, he did not feed 5,000 people that way every day. So it should not be a doctrine, but that it must be at the back of your... Where are we together now? The healer is also called a great physician. So we are saying that we do not negate the law of process, but that in our dealings with the cosmos to become a leverage, one of it, for instance, is a prophetic advantage. By this time tomorrow, and a whole nation was redeemed economically. Are we together? Now, there are many things that Jesus said about himself. I don't want to bore you into, you know, with all of those discussions since we're just starting our session. But it's important for us to study what Jesus said about himself. The wisest way to know a man is to listen to that man speak about, captured in the Gospels and in Revelation that Jesus said about himself. Can I run through that list with you? I'm so sorry I'm going to rush. Get the teachings. Praise God. Um, because what I really want to talk about for this session, we're not even the bread of life. He said this about himself. John, the light of the world. John 8, 12. Jesus said this about himself. It's important to respect what he said about himself. The truest statement of heaven and verse 9. I am the door. Number four, he said, I am the good shepherd. You find that still in John 10 verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Number five, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Can I continue? Number six, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. Number 7. He said, I am the true vine. You find that in John 15, verse 1. Don't we find the three other statements that he made about himself. Number 8. Now, I am Alpha Omega. Beginning and the end. You find that in Revelations 1 and verse 8. I am, and then you also find that in verse um, 11 also. I am Alpha, Omega, the first and the last. Powerful. I am the first and the last. Revelations 1, 17. Finally, Jesus said about himself, in John, David was dead, and I am alive forevermore. Revelations 1, 18. Ten profound statements that Jesus said about himself. And you have to believe all of those statements if you really want to walk with Jesus and you really want to know him. Because every one of those statements are keys in the spirit. And a time will come when you will need the revelation behind those statements to compel those doors to be open. For instance, when sickness plagues your body, you need the revelation. Stand before obstacles and it seems like there is no passage. One of the dimensions that you need to find is he as the door. Isn't it as the door? And he becomes your safe passage. Out men from an evangelical for any believer who seeks to be a person of stature. Please write this down. 
There are three dimensions that when you want to become a man and a woman of stature, you want to be used by God to spearhead revivals, you want to see souls saved, you want to see destinies transferred. Are you ready for that? Number one, Jesus as Savior. Number three, Je Jesus as Lord and Jesus as Christ. The end time church is the keys to territorial revival. The keys to taking over nations for Jesus. Establishing his purposes. Becoming that mountain that is as Christ. Hallelujah. Let's touch them very quickly and then we'll pray. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Come, you won't tear down, coming after me. Do you know the reason why the world sees the Christian faith as a nuisance to civilization? Because there is a portrait of Jesus, a very inaccurate portrait, individual, not to society. And so, Jesus, from the lens of those who claim to know him, gaps of ignorance finds no point of application to children, finds no point of application to professionals, finds no point of application. I want to reveal to you Jesus as Savior, as Lord, and as Christ. And then we pray and prepare for the evening. Encounter, you are in error, because the protocol of encountering him must start with him being Savior. Now, I need to say this because don't just tell me, Jesus, there is a protocol. Are we together now? That the foundation of anyone's encounter must be Jesus, the Savior. There are many people today who have met many dimensions of him, and that is wonderful. They have met the one who can open doors. They have met the one who can give prosperity, as important as that is. They have met the one who of costly assumptions. That longevity of stay in church does not translate to an encounter with the Savior. An encounter with the Savior must be a definite encounter, an intentional encounter that has proof to show. I can tell you from the authority of scripture there are many people who have not met the Savior. Because when you meet the Savior, it will affect you and affect the way you relate with your world. When you have met the Savior, you will never give up on anybody who is still breathing. There are implications to meeting the Savior. Your salvation is just one of the benefits of meeting the Savior. There is an imprint of that. If you know the potential that is captured in Jesus the Savior, you can believe God for the salvation of nations. We are very quick to conclude on people because we are loving kindness. I have drawn you. The Savior is powerful. He can reach down to your child somewhere, drinking and smoking, and you would have come, would come looking for a congregation. The Bible says, when the Savior revealing, adumbrating the ministry of a Savior, that a shepherd will come and risk his life for just one sheep. When we are quick to conclude on people, it's because we have not met the Savior the world tries to interpret what we call love from the lens of our hate the lens of our conclusions over people there are three kinds of ministries that will rise before Jesus returns and we must be careful to keep a heart of love if not we will hate those ministries number one when a madman in Gadara becomes an evangelist knew him as a madman now a prostitute at the well who now becomes an man see a man i hope you will believe that she's really met jesus hmm. because you will see these kinds of people rise in kenya people you had concluded upon and yet they will meander into a church service and the grace in a life of decadence and whatever it is once you are there concluding i know that jesus died but he did not die forever he only died for three days don't talk about the jesus who is dead whereas he's already 
But the reason why the church in Africa cannot rise is because when we peg people to be something, we are not even aware of the business they are doing with God as far as their transitions are concerned. We continue to name them after yesterday and say, but you are pre were you not the madman? It's true. I may have been the madman in that cave, but do you know what Jesus did? He came to gather a just for me. Just because you were not in that service does not mean he did not come. Listen, how does Jesus finish from a great crusade with a crowd? Then he goes to a well, speaking with one woman, with the same zeal. The, the, the theme for salvation, John 3, 16. Listen to me. We must be used by him. Who would have believed New Testament? I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, be Christians. Some of them would be in their room and here he comes, the Savior, coming to give them encounters and would build them like Paul 19 years in the wilderness of Arabia. And you will see men you once knew, men who could not have carried fire. You may be concluding on them, but you will see the mighty things that God will be doing in their life. I believe that he is able to save to the uttermost. I have seen God save cultists. I have seen us serving the unknown God. But the moment we give them a chance, largely do evangelism just to appease ourselves and free ourselves from the guilt of not looking immediately. The woman at the well was never told to go and call people. The impact of meeting Jesus the Savior, the Bible meets the Savior, they become too grateful to be quiet. Too grateful to be quiet. Too grateful to be quiet. The way we have to beg and encourage people, go and win souls. Talk to someone about Jesus. The average believer's passion is not evangelical at all. And it is not because we are bad. It is maybe. So this is what he's able to do. He can turn Mary of Magdala, remove seven demons out of her and incorporate her to serve. He can turn the life of this woman at the well. So the madman in Gadara was an evangelist all the while. No wonder he does not want to let your family rest. No wonder he does not want to two million people pursue this young boy. While you are seeing someone who is not getting a job, this is for two million people. And he said, what I'm shouting, say, Jesus the Savior. You must encounter Jesus the Savior. You have a the Savior. There are many people preaching at the, as at the point of ordination. And so that they be rewarded for the longevity of their stay, they were incorporated among those who oil was poured upon. But the truth is that they've not encountered the Savior. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Hear me. You imagine, ladies and gentlemen, that everyone gathered of the tens of thousands savior imagine if every day we have reduced evangelism to be an activity of one great superstar so our assignment is to build the stage and gather people and wait as help encounter of jesus the savior everyone can have the potential evangelists it was because of the impact of their knowing Jesus as Savior, not just as miracle worker. It was at the point of... There are many... You do not need an impartation if you are not prepared to let the nation see the Savior. Hallelujah. People's heads. Let's verify their passion and what satisfy that guilt by laying hands on them. Let us verify that they know Jesus and they will reveal Jesus as Savior. Can I tell you the truth? Everybody Jesus healed, the ones who had victory over death were the ones who had the privilege of knowing him as Savior. Kenya, I believe in the healing ministry. I believe in deliverance. I believe in prosperity. But in order of Savior, is not, we have conferences where we teach and the Bible says, God, there is no need even advocating church growth. You do not need members if you are not prepared to reveal Jesus as Savior. 
Because God adds daily, not just as many who will give, as many who should be saved. So for every time you see an increase, it is that Jesus has brought somebody who needs to know him as Savior. Kenya, I want to challenge you. No matter what we call a revival, no matter God for the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, the gospel is what we have ignored to our peril. Our fathers whose life have become models for us today were people who became, they began their ministry with a simple advocacy of revealing Jesus to the nations. They didn't know much, but they knew him. The idea was not to cause the dead to come back to life. God insisted that that evidence would come. Can I tell you, you want to see the power of God? Concentrate on the revelation of Jesus as Savior. More than just being an anointed man of God. It was a sincere desire to make my contributions to see the nation see him revealed. First, as Savior. The Jesus, the world. Let's restore Jesus, the Savior. Fortunately, many crusades right now across Africa, and I say, who sought to be revealed. If in this conference you end up knowing Joshua Selman, clapping for Joshua Selman, giving seeds to the excellency of the ministry here is the way, and we allow the Savior. Jesus, the Savior. The Lord spoke to me years ago and he said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Can I tell you, when you see some of the things that God is doing in our lives, it's not that we are the best. It's not that we are the smartest. We are just determined and committed to reveal him, especially him as Savior. And in so doing, it is amazing. Now listen, we're about to... We're, we're, listen, ladies and gentlemen, there are many people driving our cars who are not saved and we don't care. While they are driving our cars, we're editing books about Jesus, their salvation. Today, if I come here right now, and I know you have to end up preaching like this and go back to Nigeria. You will leave disappointed. Where is the power? Where is someone shouting somewhere? This is how we have so brought Jesus out of the scene and replaced him with all shades of charismatism. Not T.L. Osborne. Not Billy Graham. Not Maurice Cerullo. These were men whose lives, the anthem of their lives was to reveal Jesus, especially as Savior. Don't tell me you're a man of God. You've been in ministry. Let me speak to the young people. Number one is to follow them. Mentorship. Who through faith and those that experience cannot capture. You only follow men as they follow Christ. So there are two people you should be looking at. The one you are following. Lord, covered for their weaknesses. Raise helpers to come. You have not yet seen power until you are detained coming to serve Jesus you will be sitting down and someone will give you a plot of land and give you acres of land and Jesus will say this is courtesy your desire to reveal me you and you shall be witnesses not celebrities I said this because I just saw a wind just moving around we're going to pray Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shore, as it rises on us. Ask and now give the nations to you. This will see your light. Jesus, forgive rebels. Without brokenness and repentance, you need tolerance, not forgiveness. Tolerance is the fortitude to accommodate a limitation that will happen again and again and again. Forgiveness is granting pardon to one who has come to a point of recognition that I do not have the power to save myself, Father, and I am here. I just sense that there is an anointing that God is looking for evangelists. I know that there are many other impartations, but I just sense as I'm speaking now that there are people God is saying, I have been showing you this in dreams. I have been showing you this in visions. I've been telling you that I desire you. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. And I pray that as many in this crowd, in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
who are committed to revealing Jesus as Savior, may that grace rest upon you now. May that grace. Hallelujah. You cannot reveal Jesus as Savior until you understand the gospel. For the sake of the most theologically balanced presentation of the gospel by Apostle Paul himself. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye also have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2. By unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3. According to the scripture. Verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to scripture. The gospel of salvation is a declaration of the Father's love to mankind and creation. Revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice, death, burial, and resurrection, the Bible declares that whosoever believes that he would not perish, but that he will have the life of God. It's called Zoe, God's life. The Bible says in John 3:17 that God did not send his son. Kenya, let's get back to the crusade grounds. Jesus is coming. Kenya, let's get back to every social marketing Joshua Selman's has come to an end it is time for flesh to die and for Jesus to be revealed it is impossible that he is revealed and then we are relegated to the background but the assignment is not the marketing of self and ministries and denominations and priests. if the world never sees me and they can see the Savior I am satisfied if the world never hears me sound sermon, but I can let you understand through the frailty of my speech. Our fathers cried and they served God. They died for the Savior. Today we are living for ourselves and wondering why the Savior is not showing up in his power. The Savior only shows up when he is revealed. There is the unbeliever in your office. There is the unbeliever somewhere in your house your husband is going to hell your wife is going to hell your members are no giving is only profitable not for the magnificent structures we're building not be weak and beggarly but ladies and gentlemen my first assignment tonight is that among the many revelations of jesus that has been deficient in the church which is responsible for the prevalence of error darkness lust pride the average believer today does not understand the theology of salvation he does not even know whether he's saved or not there are still debates as to what condition must a man satisfy to be saved we have written many books about ourselves but not about Jesus or we have written about Jesus just the healer as wonderful as that is I will leave the Savior here and we'll wrap up but I need to also show you the Lord and the Christ. If you do not have this tripartite revelation, you can never access genuine spiritual power and you will never be an end time voice. The revelation of the Lordship of Jesus will leave that for the evening. But just to give it is finally planted in you. You need to know Jesus. when he's revealed as Savior, the hallmark of Savior, he's not just the one doing when he's Lord. You are the one doing. He truly becomes Lord in your life when you've lost the ability to say no. That everything he says is yes. But Christ that lives in the flesh, in me, and the life that I live today in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The reason why we have many people polluting the altar and many people who are bringing reproach to the name of the Lord in various forms is because although they have encountered the Savior, they have not encountered Lord. The proof that you have encountered Lord is surrender. Evolving at the epicenter of your own life, you may have met the Savior, but not Lord. What happens when you meet the Savior? I know we say we give our hearts to Him, but theologically speaking, that is incorrect. No, something is wrong with that heart. Why should He take it? He's giving you His life. That's what happens. But when it has to do with the revelation of Jesus as Lord, that is where you cast your golden crown. 
because they lay aside your accomplishments and your achievements and you will bow to only one name only one king and only one lord when you pass through that gate of understanding his lordship then you come to jesus the christ this is when and you will produce an ill wanting healings receiving miracles all the products of the anointing but you want to follow that pathway to knowing jesus the savior the lord and the christ all that i shared with you was peter's first lord and christ and three thousand people came because a man followed that protocol and the church began to multiply please hold hands together i want to wrap up for this session can you hold hands with someone kenya is a foreigner in your land because there is a jesus and will say i don't know ask my grandfather i tell you what an app is i can tell you what ai is. pulpits our billboards our mass media jesus revealed all the confusion about what we believe yes, what denomination the moment jesus the savior comes he's a binder denominationalism dies when the savior is projected because i may not agree with certain things but we all savior more than greek hebrew prince on certain things because it is the savior we are projecting in his revelation everybody's advocating savior. hold hands in one moment this is a solemn assembly be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher pray for kenya let the same every church you know pray for every man of god you know pray for every conference you know pray for every revival platform you know jesus we need you as the savior to be revealed in kenya revealed in south africa revealed in nigeria revealed in ghana revealed in europe revealed in america maranatha come again as savior come again as savior save our children save our wives save our husbands just a minute to pray right to the back lift up a sound of prayer let the savior be reintroduced back in jesus name we pray when he turned in you see the fathers have a way of seeing that the cloud of witnesses that their days are numbered and he said for the remaining part of his life he wants to be able to give jesus eight million souls before he goes to the lord not by another car of sinners that are never saved may we never hold conferences that becomes a celebrity galore with and take jesus out of revealing savior deliverance came as a way of convincing men to believe in savior every other thing finds its value in the life you have decided to make jesus the emphasis of this conference and we thank you thank you for all of the speakers who have introduced various perspectives and dimensions of jesus lord among the many things that you have taught us this afternoon is the need to restore and to dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye